welcome to dr ripada kirni biology and in today's session we study about the chapter 11 transport in plant from class 11th biology and in this chapter we study about the transport of plant that what are the different path of transport as well as we study the different kinds of pressures which are develop inside the plant cell so first we discuss about the transport in plant so when we study about the path for transport so here you remember mainly two types of transports are there first passive transport that we already discussed that how the passive transport is differ from active transport and the second transport you remember the second transport is called as active <coughs> transport so this part you remember now first we come towards the passive transport and then we study about active transport passive transport when we study so here you remember passive transport in simple terms when the transport of molecule like the solute solvent so when the transport of molecule even the transport of gaseous substances also you remember take place from their own lower concentration towards their own higher concentration that means in simple terms you can say whenever transport is take place according to concentration gradient then that transport you remember called as passive transport so passive transport you remember transport of molecules of solute or solvent generally we study when take place according to concentration gradient is called passive transport now what do we understand by concentration gradient concentration gradient means whenever transport is take place according to or sorry whenever transport is take place from their own lower concentration towards their own higher concentration then you remember it is called as passive transport when we study about the passive transport so three modes of passive transport we mainly study and in these three modes of passive transport what we included or what we study that is important first we study about uniport second sim port port word we use for transport and the third is nt port so this part you remember very well here first i go through the diagram then one by one we come towards the all three types of the transport so here simply you remember this is the plasma membrane we draw and this plasma membrane as you all are knowing because we already studied about the cell and its structure and in that cell the unit of chapter we studied about the function of plasma membrane and nature of plasma membrane plasma membranes are selectively permeable or differentially permeable and responsible for the transport of molecule mainly according to their concentration gradient so when we study about this so this is simply you remember this we show the plasma membrane now across this plasma membrane across this plasma membrane means 
either the molecule transported towards the outer surface of plasma membrane or from outer surface they enter inside the plasma membrane or in cytoplasm of plasma membrane so first here we study about when first step we study so first we study uniport uniport means you remember simply when we come towards the diagram illustration so uniport means of one molecule either molecule of water molecule of any gases or any of the solvent but that molecule you remember always to be transported singly one one molecule uni means single so one one molecule is transport and this molecule is single molecule is transported in a single direction throughout the life whenever you in a oxygen one of the most common example for uniport you remember oxygen and carbon dioxide transport during respiration whenever any of the cell undergoes an inhalation or even we when in a so only we need oxygen and that oxygen always enter inside the cell how it enters that is a different part but during aerobic respiration oxygen always enter inside the cell secondly one one molecule of oxygen is transported so that you remember uniport means one single molecule aapka transfer single molecule is transported in a single direction secondly when we come towards the second example so second example you remember the second type of transport is symport symport here you remember sim means together so here what is happening in symport the one molecule for which membrane is impermeable this molecule is bind with the another molecule for which the membrane is permeable and the two molecules always transported together but again direction you remember both the molecules are transported in same direction so here you remember symport means when the molecules you remember when the two molecules of a different different substance when transported together but both are transported in one direction either towards inner space or towards outer space then it is called as symport and third we come towards the third type the most important type that is the antiport anti you already know anti means opposite so antiport means the transport of molecule or transport of ions when take place in opposite direction one one molecule is transported and if one molecule is transported in inner space so from inner space the another ion or molecule transported in outer space one of the most common example for antiport that the transport of ions take place in transpiration that the transport of potassium ion as well as the transport of proton or hydrogen ion both the potassium ion and hydrogen ion are always to be transported during the opening of stomata or closing of stomata into opposite direction so this in simple terms you remember now one by one we come towards that uniport when we come towards the uniport so here you remember first we discuss about uniport uniport this diagram mainly you remember for your competitive exams also uniport that transport in one direction firstly and secondly you remember transport of single single molecule first thing example oxygen transport during respiration is always towards 
साइटोप्लाज्म सिमिलरली कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड ट्रांसपोर्ट ड्यूरिंग रेस्पिरेशन इज ऑलवेज टूवर्ड्स outer surface of cell that means the carbon dioxide always comes out so this condition you never observe that any time carbon dioxide enter in any of the living organism and the oxygen opposite transport never be take place if it uh, first thing it never be take place so oxygen you remember during respiration or breathing also you can say it always transported during uh, breathing towards the inner cytoplasm of the cell and co2 is always transported out of the cell so this part simply you remember for unipod number of examples we appear that whenever we uh, intake a food food is digest and the carbohydrate suppose we intake as a food and the food is transported so upon digestion carbohydrate get convert into glucose and glucose when transported through the blood so it glucose molecule one by one always transported towards the cytoplasm of the cell or towards the inner side of a uh, site of cell so these example you remember for the unipod secondly transport is take place according to concentration gradient therefore much most important thing in passive transport or in unipod symport and antipod energy metabolic energy that we say so atp or metabolic energy you remember is never be used so here you remember atp is never required and why it is not required because the transport is take place according to concentration gradient now we come towards the second transport second transport you remember symport you pay attention for this kind of transport very well why this transport is generally take place because sometimes the membrane is impermeable for one of the molecule so symport when we study so symport means transport of two molecules together but important thing is both the molecule transported in same direction so this part you remember that both the molecule are transported in same direction secondly you remember when we come towards the symport <clears throat> so in symport you remember generally plasma membrane is permeable for one molecule and the other molecule for which membrane is impermeable its transport along with first molecule so most of the time you remember or for the easy transport also you remember generally symport is take place so this part you remember symport and example one of the best example for symport you remember glucose whenever transport glucose always transport in the form of glucose 6 phosphate or glucose 1 phosphate so this part you remember very well that glucose transport whenever take place it never be transported alone it always be transported along with phosphate 
and most of the time you appear glucose is transported in the form of glucose 6-phosphate or glucose 1-phosphate. So this you remember for the second type of transport that is a symport. Now we come towards the third transport. That third transport you remember, third is called as antiport. Antiport we simply studied with the help of example and uh, uh, during transpiration antiport you definition wise you remember normally two ions of, of similar charge when transported they always transport in opposite direction this part you remember so the transport of two molecule or transport of ions of similar charge in opposite direction one ion move inside the cell and another molecule of similar charge move out of the cell then it is called as antipode now we study about the antipode with the help of one example so here you come that first we trans study about only with the small diagram we come towards the antipode so example of antipodes when we study two common example you study throughout the biology for antipode first example you remember during opening and closing of stomata opening and closing of stomata potassium and hydrogen ion transport this part you remember so here you remember during the opening and closing of stomata when we study so during daytime or during in presence of sunlight simply you remember in very short way we discuss this part because this theory is there potassium malate ion theory which is responsible for opening of stomata that we will study in very detail when we come towards the process of transpiration so here you remember here the stomata show the centrally placed guard cell. In these guard cell, single nucleus and number of chloroplasts are there. When transport during daytime, if you appear, suppose this here we show the transport during daytime and in this stomata we show the transport during night time. So what is happening during daytime? From accessory cell, potassium ion are transported towards the cytoplasm of guard cell and from guard cell influx and deflux in antiport we use whenever we study the antiport for the ionic gradient or ionic exchange we use the word influx or efflux so influx means the potassium ion transport is take place towards the inner cytoplasm and the hydrogen ion transport is take place that is E flux, the hydrogen ion transport is take place towards the accessory cell or out of the uh, out, uh, outward to the guard cells. At during night time, the process is just take place in opposite direction. So here you remember during night time the potassium ion from outer surface start to move towards the during night time. I again repeat. During night time, potassium ion from the cytoplasm of guard cell start to move towards the outer side and the protons which are accumulated during daytime, these protons are start to move towards inner side. So in antipode, one most important thing you remember, whenever antipode is take place for ionic gradient, so generally it may be take place in both direction. In a what way both direction? Firstly the ions of opposite charge, uh, same charge move in opposite direction first. Secondly you remember whenever the potassium ion during daytime move towards the out of the cytoplasm. But at night time you remember 
द नाइट टाइम प्रोटोन्स आपके क्या हो रहे हैं प्रोटोन्स और मूव टूवर्ड्स द इनर साइड सो दिस मूवमेंट यू रिमेंबर ड्यूरिंग डे टाइम इफ यू अपेयर सो इन डे टाइम सिंपली यू रिमेंबर इनफ्लक्स ऑफ पोटेशियम आयन एंड इफ्लक्स ऑफ हाइड्रोजन आयन बट ड्यूरिंग नाइट टाइम वेन वी स्टडी सो एट नाइट टाइम यू रिमेंबर प्रोसेस इज जस्ट इनवर्ड दैट इज द इफ्लक्स ऑफ पोटेशियम आयन एंड इनफ्लक्स यू रिमेंबर इनफ्लक्स ऑफ द हाइड्रोजन आयन इज टेक प्लेस सो दिस इज वन एग्जाम्पल क्लियर है दिस पार्ट यू रिमेंबर फॉर द एंटी पॉट सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल यू स्टडी सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल वी स्टडी ड्यूरिंग द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड ट्रांसपोर्ट इन ह्यूम एज बाई कार्बोनेट आयन सो वेन एवर बाई कार्बोनेट आयन ट्रांसपोर्ट यू अपेयर इन बिटवीन द आरबीसी एंड प्लाज ब्लड प्लाज्मा दिस इज फॉर एग्जाम्पल सपोज दिस इज द ब्लड वेसल इन साइड दिस ब्लड वेसल the biconcave rbc is present and inside the rbc you remember nearly 70% carbon dioxide react with water and it responsible for h2co3 this h2co3 immediately break into bicarbonate ion plus h plus ion and then after this bicarbonate ion from the rbc transported toward the plasma of blood so bicarbonate ion always transported towards plasma that is out of the rbc or towards the outer surface of plasma membrane and to maintain the gradient of this bicarbonate ion the equal number of chloride ions you remember chloride shift you already studied so chloride shift is take place and this chloride shift is in response to bicarbonate ion so number similar number of chloride ions are transported towards the inner cytoplasm of the rbc so here also you appear the uh, ion exchange for the similar ion the similar charge ion that is both the ions of negative charge बाई कार्बोनेट आयन मीन ट्रांसपोर्टेड इन प्लाज्मा सो इक्वल नंबर ऑफ क्लोराइड आयन आर ट्रांसपोर्टेड इन साइड द साइटोप्लाजम ऑफ द आरबीसी सो बोथ द आयन बाई कार्बोनेट आयन एंड क्लोराइड आयन ऑलवेज थ्रू आउट द लाइफ ऑफ ह्यूम यू रिमेंबर दे ऑलवेज ट्रांसपोर्टेड इन अपोजिट डायरेक्शन वन इज टूवर्ड्स द प्लाज्मा एंड वन इज टूवर्ड्स द आरबीसी सो दिस मच यू रिमेंबर फॉर द टू एग्जाम्पल बिकॉज इन एंटीपोर्ट sometimes students quite get confused and generally they refer the exchange between the ions of opposite charge you never will remember the direction is in opposite way but the ions or ions of a similar charge always be transported during the antipode in passive transport so these three types you very well remember for the process of passive transport uniport symport and antiport and now we come towards the active transport that what is meaning of active transport so students let's begin with active transport when we study about active transport so the mode of transport which required atp because the transport is take place against concentration gradient so here you remember the transport is take place by utilization of metabolic energy is called as active transport secondly why this atp is required so here you remember atp is required because transport is take place against concentration gradient this part you remember so this transport is take place against concentration gradient so now what is happening what do we understand by the against concentration gradient that means 
द मोलिक्यूल्स आर ट्रांसपोर्टेड from their own lower concentration towards their own higher concentration so here you remember when you study about the active transport one common term we use that is pump pump means the forceful absorption of molecule is take place from lower concentration and because of that you remember this transport is required the atp here you remember the pump means pump are special proteins which used for forceful absorption or transport of molecules and secondly suppose the 10 proteins or 20 proteins for example you remember that this is our plasma membrane and in this plasma membrane suppose the 10 or here i only draw the five proteins clear suppose the five proteins pump or five proteins are present across this plasma membrane or in this plasma membrane that you study again i am saying the structure of plasma membrane is very much important so the students who are new for the session they kindly go through the structure of plasma membrane from cell the unit of life the video is already there so you one time go through those video so structure is clear that why we every time use the term protein though the membrane is lipoproteinaceous so these proteins are important for example we come towards the point for example these proteins the five proteins are present and this is the inner space of the plasma membrane that means the cytoplasmic part and here it is the outer space that means the plasma membrane is in connection with any other cell or in outer environment so here you remember in our space for any of the ion here or molecule here the low concentration and here suppose it is high concentration so these proteins are forcefully absorb these ions from low towards the high concentration or transport these molecule from the low to high concentration secondly what is happening out of five if all the protein in crt states when all the proteins are involved in transport in that condition the rate of transport is maximum that means what does it means is suppose this plasma membrane show the presence of five proteins and these five pumps or these five proteins involved in the transport against concentration gradient and if all the proteins are involved in that condition you remember or at that state the maximum transport is take place so automatically the rate of transport is increases secondly you remember when you come towards the next chapters uh, in human physiology over there you study during the transport of ions transport of molecules some of the substances function as inhibitors inhibitors means they decreases the rate of transport of ion or transport of the molecules of solute or solvent so these inhibitors one of the most important question for your objective exam need that the inhibitors whenever inhibit the pumps or inhibit the proteins so where to be they bind so inhibitors you always remember this is some conceptual part inhibitors are always bind with the side chains of protein actually you see when we studied about the biomolecule so in biomolecule sections we studied proteins are made up of amino acid and these inhibitors you remember inhibitors are actually bind with the side chains of amino acid that we simply say the pro, they are bind with inhibitors are bind with the side chains of the protein so this part you remember so in presence of inhibitors 
when will be the rate of active transport is decreases so either the rate of active transport is decreases in presence of inhibitor or if all the proteins are not involved in transport at that time also the rate of active transport is decreases the most common example for active transport you remember one of the most common example is we use that sodium potassium pump again why we use the pump because some special proteins or channel gate protein we use the term for that proteins those proteins are responsible for the transport of sodium as well as for the transport of potassium so the proteins which involve in the transport of sodium and potassium these are commonly called as sodium potassium pump and when will we study sodium potassium pump so that when we come towards the nervous control and coordination and we studied about the impulse conduction of nerve impulse conduction recently i already uploaded one keynote for that section only for the super fast revision of neat aspirants or uh, the students who are appearing in neat in coming exams for 13 september for them so over there also i explain how the sodium potassium pump work so you can also go through that video so this much you remember for the passive and active transport and now we come towards in very short when these transport or take uh, uh, transport of molecules are take place because in next session we discuss with the different pressure system so first here we only study what are the different pressures in cell so different pressure in cell cytoplasm when we study so first you remember one of the most important pressure in cell when the cell is in turgid state that pressure is called as turgid pressure so mainly this we will discuss in our next session so one pressure is turgid pressure second pressure to maintain this turgid pressure cell wall develop equivalent but opposite direction pressure that is called wall pressure the third type of pressure is there that pressure which maintain the movement of water in cell cytoplasm that is called as osmotic pressure fourth type of pressure you remember is diffusion pressure and this diffusion pressure generally we study in terms of diffusion pressure deficiency or dpd we study so diffusion pressure actually responsible for generation a gradient between two cells and that we study in the form of diffusion pressure gradient or diffusion pressure deficiency or dpd one another function pressure we study that is called as suction pressure so that some new terms are used for these pressure so that also we study now which term replace the suction pressure the another pressure that is imbibition pressure as we continue one by one so all these pressures we study so imbibition pressure is also there so number of different pressures are present inside the cell and because of these different pressures only cell maintain the turgid state and it responsible for either the active transport or the passive transport so for today's session we mainly discuss about the transport that path for transport passive transport active transport for objective purpose you only remember where the atp use why the atp use what do we understand by pump when will be the transport of passive or active transport will be maximum these are the some conceptual portion for theory exams you go through the difference between active and passive transport first that diagram also important and thirdly the three modes of passive transport also directly asked and one chart is provided in ncert for table actually their chart is not the table is provided in ncert 
for comparison of active and passive transport so you go very well go through that uh, table also from the ncert with this i sum up my today's session again i request to all new students who join from the either from last session or from this session kindly subscribe my channel like my video share my videos and if you feel any doubt and difficulty so kindly ask those doubt and difficulty and go through my telegram and instagram that uh, links are provided in description up to next session stay motivated and stay blessed